Hi everybody, this is Bandor. I'm going to be doing a multi-part series on how to take objects from Blender into Adobe's Substance Painter for texturing them and then how to bring all of that into Second Life and set up an object and get it get it working with in Second Life so that it looks the best it can possibly look. Now this is my technique for doing it. Um, other people may have different techniques. This is what works for me and that I've found through my experience to be the best way to do it. If you have uh, better ways of doing it, let me know. Anyway, again, this is going to be multi-part. First part is going to be really about what you have to do in Blender to set up the files. Then we're going to go uh, load the files into Substance Painter, how you have to set those up. Then we're going to work on texturing it. We're going to work on exporting it. And then we're going to work on bringing it all into Second Life and seeing how it all comes together. I'm going to try to keep each video to about 10 minutes in length and uh, see how that goes. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is the Blender piece. So here is Blender 3.12 that has a chair loaded in it that I've built. This model of the chair it's from a design that I found on Wayfair.com. Uh, fairly simple design. Looks kind of cool. Um, and I want to texture this in Substance Painter, which is really a really uh, neat way of texturing things so that they look as good as they possibly can. So, so there's a couple things you have to do in Blender to be able to do that. The first thing is you have to make sure that all of the parts of your object are UV mapped and UV mapped well. And then the second thing is that you have to make sure that each piece that you want to be able to paint within Substance Painter has a unique material applied to it because that's how Substance Painter separates your, your object into different pieces. Now if you have parts that you want to apply the exact same texture to, uh, you can apply the same material to them in Blender. Like say for example, I have my seat cushions here and I wanted those seat cushions to be textured in Substance Painter with at one time. Uh, I could give them both the same material here and then when you load it in, sec in uh, Substance Painter, it treats them as if those two objects are the same or, or at least connected. Um, sometimes you want to do that, but what I've found is that it doesn't really give you the right shading effects. What it does is if you have two or more pieces with the same material, when you go into Substance Painter, it only seems to really do the shading for one of the objects and then applies that same shading logic to the other pieces that use the same material. It's kind of weird. Um, that may not be how it's supposed to work. That may not be realistic, but that's what I've seen. So I don't do that. What I do... Uh, Oh, oh, sorry, and there, there's another way you could do it, which I could make this object one big object with one UV map. And sometimes you'll see that with, with third-party things where someone's done it. Um, and then you have to do all your texturing inside that one that one UV texture, right? So what happens, you can do that, and you can take it into Substance Painter. Substance Painter has a way for you to break the geometry down, uh, divide it up and then paint each part of that geometry separately. It's very powerful and has some really cool tools for doing that. Um, but that's way more work, and it's very, very complicated to do. Uh, the, this method that I use is the fastest way I know to do it and allows me to really mass-produce product but still maintain good quality and provide the best look that I can, but doing it in a way that's fast and easy. And for me, uh, that's by having everything as separate parts. So if you look at this chair, I have the, the back cushion, the seat cushion, this back piece over here. Each part of the arm is a separate object. And I, I don't even have them linked together. It's just, it's just there. Um, but what I have done is for each part in the material tab, you'll notice that there's a different material. And I name the material for what I want the part to be called. And that's going to be what the part for those textures is called all the way into Second Life because we're going to use the names that Substance Painter generates for those files so we can tell them apart. So I know the texture that goes on the back cushion is named back cushion. The textures that are going to go on the seat cushion, I'm going to name seat cushion. So for each part, you create a new material and then you're going to set the name for that material. So how I did that, you click on the part that you want, you come over to your material tab, and then you simply, uh, there's a new button 
if you don't have one already, you just click the new and you give it a name. I've already done that on all of these. So this one's called back cushion. This one's called seat cushion. That's called back. And then I have different parts for the arms and I have a left and a right version of it. So this is right arm, left arm, right legs, left legs, right slats, left slats. There's a right side, left side, etc. And that's how I've named all of the things in my materials. I also applied colors to some of the materials and then I realized ah, you don't need to do that because you don't even see the colors here unless you go to one of your material views. And you can kind of, ooh, that's gaudy as I'll get out. So there you go. You can see the colors are applied. And that's helpful if you want to differentiate things, but it's really not necessary. So you don't need to do that. You don't need to do anything with the materials at all in Blender except name them. That's really all you have to do is just, just name the materials and have one material for each part, including the floor shadow, which I call shadow. Okay, that's the first part. It's naming all the materials. Second thing is each one has to have a UV map. So if you go into the UV editor and you pull up the uh, turn on transparency and then you select everything, you can see the UV map over on the left side. Do the same thing for the, the other parts. You pick the part, you go into edit mode, select everything with transparency on, and you can see the UV map for the cushions. Um, I've gone through and UV mapped every single part and they all have very, very clean UV maps. So, again, that's that's what you that's the only thing you have to do for your models to be ready to go over to uh, Substance Painter. UV maps on all the parts, and unique named materials for each part that you want to texture separately. Then, when you're ready, you just go in and select everything on your model. We're going to export it, going to File, Export, and the format that I found that works the best is FBX. So pick it FBX, and then just give it a name, and for this we're going to call it Wood Cloth Chair 6, because I already have five other ones. I'm putting it into my Documents folder, and then Export. Uh, and then while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and export it for Second Life. Second Life can't handle FBX. It needs Collada DAE file, so you pick that. And then this is Blender 3. There's already a preset for Second Life. You just pick the Operator Presets tab and pull it down. Pick SL plus OpenSim Static. And you notice I'm not using any kind of special utility or tool to do that. It's built into, into Blender. Um, you can just do that. If you are using one of the tools, you'll use the, their method for doing it. And then give it the same name. We're going to call this number 6 as well. And export. That's it. So that ends this part of the video. We'll see you in just a few minutes and we'll go into Substance Painter and do some work.